So why do we bother with inviscid flow? It's a very good question. I've shown here the streamlines and the pressure contours for the inviscid flow around an ellipse. Now by definition, inviscid flows have no viscosity. Consequently, there is perfect slip at the boundaries, and therefore there are no boundary layers. So on the upstream side of the object, there is a high pressure stagnation point. Around the sides where the flow is fast, there is low pressure. But at the back, and this is D'Alembert's paradox, there is another stagnation point and a region of high pressure, and therefore there is no net force in the streamwise direction. So around the back of the object, this flow is totally unrealistic. In a real flow, that is to say a viscous flow, around an ellipse, boundary layers will form along the surface. The envisaged flow solution from low pressure to high pressure would cause a strong adverse pressure gradient and therefore force the flow in the opposite direction to the flow velocity. The boundary layer would not be able to withstand this and it would separate, probably around here. So the actual flow looks more like this, with the key difference being that in a viscous flow there are always boundary layers and boundary layers in an adverse pressure gradient will usually separate unless the Reynolds number is very low or the body has a very streamlined shape and this separation causes a low pressure region behind the body and this low pressure region is the cause of the drag that we observe in experiments and which resolves D'Alembert's paradox. In inviscid flow the Reynolds number is equal to infinity because the viscosity is zero. In a high Reynolds number flow, you can have the Reynolds number tending to infinity, and it's tempting to think that the flow solution as the Reynolds number tends to infinity equals the flow solution when the Reynolds number is equal to infinity. But this is absolutely not the case because of the presence of boundary layers, which cannot exist in an inviscid flow. So why do we bother with inviscid flow? Well, firstly, it is quite a good approximation for the flow when the boundary layers are thin and have not separated, i.e. around the front of the body. Secondly, in streamlined bodies, such as airfoils, there is very little flow separation. And one fairly cheap way to calculate the flow around an airfoil is to calculate the inviscid flow solution, and particularly to calculate the pressure field, and then to calculate the rate of growth of the boundary layer based on that pressure field. We then work out the blockage caused by that boundary layer and then recalculate a new inviscid flow solution and then we keep iterating until we get convergence because then by using a relatively cheap inviscid flow solver and a relatively cheap boundary layer solver one has managed to calculate the flow around an airfoil which would otherwise be very expensive. I'm going to finish this chapter by considering heli shore cells. In a heli shore cell a viscous fluid is forced around an object that is sandwiched between two flat plates. The Reynolds number is very small. This is creeping flow. And this first picture, again taken from Van Dyck's album of fluid motion, shows the flow around a circle sandwiched between two flat plates in a heli shore cell. Now, in this very special configuration, one can write the velocity field as the gradient of some potential function. And the rather nice thing is that in an inviscid flow, one can also write the velocity field as the gradient of some potential function. And for the same boundary conditions, the two flows have the same solution. So even though the top flow is very viscous and the bottom flow is inviscid, it just so happens that they both have the same velocity field and the same streamlines. But it's important to point out that if one were to remove the two flat plates above and below the circle in the heli shore cell, and then examine creeping flow around a cylinder, which is the configuration in the inviscid case, then the velocity field in the viscous flow would be very different.